Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Peter Murphy begins now. Good evening everyone. Tasmania's borders will stay open, but there are growing calls for all arrivals to be placed into isolation to stop the spread of coronavirus. However, the freight industry says there's no cause for concern as shoppers clear shelves. Happy to be home, even if it means spending two weeks locked up there. I just come from Bali. And you're going to go into self-isolation now? Yeah, got 14 days of that. 400 coronavirus tests have been completed. Confirmed cases remain at seven. Across the state, 88 people are now in self-quarantine. Some are questioning how clear the message is for airport arrivals. I'd heard that there were going to be arrivals cards, but nothing was actually given to us on the plane. Walk, walking through the gate lounge in Hobart, there was still no communication until we actually exited the gate lounge. Masks are now a common sight in terminals. We've just travelled from Perth overnight and um, decided to wear face masks to protect ourselves. And... Protection which doesn't go far enough, according to some. Today, a full-page ad called for all visitors crossing Bass Strait to go straight to quarantine. Others are suggesting the state's borders close entirely. Yeah, yeah, I reckon we should, probably should have done that by now. That uh, would have worked out well for you, though. Ah, uh, yeah, probably not, probably not, but that's my, my problem, not... Uh, the Premier says that won't happen. We will not be stopping trade. We will not be closing our borders. Ports and trade routes are expecting congestion, but the freight industry says it's up to the job. Freight will not stop. It can't stop. If we do stop freight, then we live on an island and we need to have freight coming in, as well as exports going out to support our industries. The crisis has also seen international oil prices plummet. The message to retailers... Step up do the right thing and pass those savings on in full to motorists. Where the virus spreads, fear follows. But you're more likely to catch a laugh in Launceston. Uh, yeah, Krispy Kremes, can't buy them here. <laughs> Essentials for isolation, maybe. Well, definitely don't think they're going to last that long, though. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. There are fears tonight our small business sector could face mass closures as owners and staff become increasingly worried about their future. The Premier has promised more help is on the way, but businesses say they've already been forced to make heartbreaking decisions. They're still restocking the shelves, but for this small Tasmanian business, like many others, the future remains uncertain. The owners trying their best to stay open for themselves and their staff. We're looking at ways to do that online through deliveries and uh, to do our best to continue employing and keeping our staff on board. But in the midst of the coronavirus crisis, there's been one small upside at Terros. A rise in sales of preserving jars and dehydrators as people prepare for self-isolation. People are preparing to spend a bit more time in the garden and maybe make a bit more use of their uh, kitchen time as well. Accommodation providers are increasingly worried, facing a barrage of cancellation and refund requests. We can't plan, we can't plan for the future. We've got casual staff that are being affected and that breaks me, um, just that I can't offer them shifts right now. What kind of financial hit do you think you'll take? Um, oh God, it's really hard to say. It depends on domestic travel, really. If domestic travel stays open, fingers crossed, um, then it might keep us open. If those things get shut down, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really hard for us to get through without closing. And shifts are already drying up for our casual workers. You rely on your roster to come out next week and with everything that's going on, it's just it's cutting down and you just don't know when your next shift is going to be. It's very much trying to scramble as many shifts as you can. The Premier's stimulus package announced yesterday included $20 million for interest-free loans, waiving payroll tax and job-creating projects. But with some businesses already considering closure, he's promised there is more help on the way in the state's May budget. We will make uh, decisions as we move towards that as to what level of response is required at the time. But it will be proportionate. It will be scalable and importantly, it will support those people that need support. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmanian service providers are bringing in measures to protect our most vulnerable. Extra precautions are being considered to protect our elderly and homeless populations, including the option of locking down facilities. 
Signs on the front door of a Hobart aged care facility warning of a lockdown, telling visitors to stay away to protect those living here. It's a move put in place by Respect Aged Care as the threat of coronavirus escalates for some of our most vulnerable. Another provider, Southern Cross Care, saying community transmission in Tasmania would be the trigger for it to commence lockdowns, with other measures currently in place. Anyone coming into our facilities at the moment, um, they need to uh, fill out a uh, visitor sheet and actually state where they have travelled in the last 14 days. Other limits put in place, including limiting visitor numbers and restricting areas where those visits can take place. Moves are welcomed by the Heart Foundation, limiting the risk to those most vulnerable. It is older people that are, that are more likely to have serious uh, uh, issues if they contract the disease and people with chronic conditions like heart disease are also appearing to be more vulnerable. People who are homeless in Tasmania are also highlighted as a group at risk. They sleep in open places, they access um, um, bathrooms and public toilets and that, so that exposure is even greater for them. Hobart's safe night space, providing accommodation for those sleeping rough, was forced to close temporarily last week due to coronavirus concerns. We suspected someone who had stayed there on Thursday night might have had coronavirus. That meant that we had to very quickly determine quite how we continue to provide services at the site. The person returned a negative result, with new measures now in place to protect staff and those using the service. Despite the challenges, Hobart City Mission and St Vincent de Paul are promising to remain open to provide essential support services until public health authorities advise otherwise. In particular our disability services have to continue but our safe night space remains open and our emergency relief remains open. So we want to reassure the community that we are here to provide those services. Um, however, to be patient with us because it may be that in some instances it will take a little bit longer. Ebony Ablett, 7 Tasmania News. In developing news late today, Tasmanian jury trials are being suspended for at least four months. The Supreme Court announced it will not commence any new hearings before a jury due to the level of public alarm about coronavirus. In a statement, the court says there could be a danger jurors would be distracted by the crisis and people might be unwilling or unable to attend. Tasmania's Supreme Courts will remain open to deal with other matters that don't require a jury. While the immediate ban on indoor gatherings of more than 100 people has forced many more Tasmanian groups to cancel upcoming events. Markets and church masses are among those cut, while bride and grooms are being forced to contend with further wedding planning dramas. These are the once-in-a-lifetime moments many dream of from an early age, but that dream is fading into the distance for some couples. Due to strict new regulations, weddings may be left in the lurch. We haven't seen anything like this. Large-scale celebrations to be scrapped amid a government ban of non-essential gatherings of more than 100 people. Over the last couple of days, unfortunately, we've had five wedding cancellations, so that's drastically impacted our projections for the year. Planners say it's not pre-wedding jitters. Brides and grooms-to-be are scared. More cancellations are expected in the coming days, and many in the industry fear they'll be out of work for months. I've just rescheduled my first one today, which is the 12th of September. That's maybe optimistic. The unfortunate thing is about weddings is that people are booked years in advance. We take wedding bookings for 2022 at this point. Couples are encouraged to postpone, not abandon, limiting the damage on small businesses. It's not just weddings. Organisers of the annual AgFest have been forced to give the upcoming event the cold shoulder. In its history of AgFest of 37 years, this is the first time that AgFest has been cancelled. The 700 exhibitors will be offered a refund of 85%, but the economic hold it leaves totals more than $20 million. It's a massive blow to us, our exhibitors, the patrons. Um, everyone suffers, unfortunately. Others in the coronavirus casualty ward include Spiegel Tent, the Festival of Voices, Bernie's Aquatic Centre, Launceston's Harvest Market, as well as the hugely popular Salamanca Market in Hobart, which will be suspended for two weeks. Late this afternoon, the Catholic Church also announced it would cease public masses until further notice. Garth Burley, 7 Tasmania News. Police are appealing for information after a 31-year-old man was shot in the leg in Ravenswood last night. The man presented to the Launceston General Hospital at around 8.20pm. He has so far been reluctant to speak with police. Anyone with information should contact Crime Stoppers.
A car and a motorbike have been involved in a crash on the Tasman Highway. The collision occurred shortly after midday at Little Swanport. Emergency services were quick on the scene with the Westpac rescue helicopter also called in to help. The extent of the injuries to both motorists is unknown at this stage. A Tasmanian underwater robot has returned from a groundbreaking Antarctic mission, shedding a light on just how much climate change is impacting our oceans. The University of Tasmania's state-of-the-art autonomous underwater vehicle spent the summer deep beneath the Thwaites Glacier, measuring ice loss and sea level rise. The robot completed six missions, collecting data in previously inaccessible areas underneath ice shelves. The ice shelves are basically areas where the ocean is in contact with the ice sheet and so the ocean can melt that ice sheet and add basically water to the ocean and then that can raise um, sea level. A team of scientists will now spend the next few months analysing the data in Hobart. More than 7,500 people visited this year's Glover Prize exhibition in Evandale. The number of visitors is less than previous years, which organisers believe is primarily due to the recent virus outbreak. 42 artworks were selected as finalists for the country's most prestigious landscape art prize. Hobart artist Robert O'Connor took out the 2020 prize with his Somewhere on the Midlands artwork. Tasmania is entering a sporting blackout with all major competitions now cancelled or postponed. Today, supercars put the brakes on Simmons Plains, while Targa, hockey and more local footy leagues accepted fate. The pandemic has put a stop to Simmons Plains. And that is a high-speed exit. The event was meant to run in just over a fortnight. It's now been postponed until later in the year. A pit stop for the annual pilgrimage made by 50,000 motorsport fans. We're a visceral experience. We're loud. We're in your face. It's very difficult to justify going through the whole process and all of the investment required from all of the parties. Uh, if we can't give the fans everything that we'd like to give them. Races in Auckland and Perth have also been shelved. Supercars ruled out running these events in front of empty stands. The goal is to jam-pack races into the second half of the year to provide a full championship series. The red flag's also been waived for Target Tasmania, the first time the event has been cancelled since its inception back in 1992. <laughs> Purely from a target perspective, it was a day that I don't think any of us would ever see coming. The draw card starved of fuel as community health concerns take precedence. We travel all over the island and that's the reason the event's been so successful. But that also means we're touching the public every single minute of every single day. Hockey Tasmania has suspended all competitions. It also means next month's under-18 national championship in Launceston won't go ahead. Even the domestic Hockey One competition is at risk. If we can't uh, uh, generate revenue uh, through our local competitions in the next uh, three or four months, it's highly unlikely that our Hockey One program will take place. We just won't have the funds to be able to do that. The North West Football League has now delayed round one until the end of May. The Southern Football League will make a call tonight, while Cricket North West has fallen into line with other competitions and called off its grand final. But we do have one sports story to look forward to. Following a soft tissue infection, Mystic Journey will make her return to racing in Friday night's William Reed Stakes at Mooney Valley. The mayor has drawn barrier six for the Group 1 race. It'll be her first since the Cox Plate in October. Good evening, Hobart reached a high of 24 today, Launceston 20, 21 at Burnie, Devonport 19. 25 was the state's top at Campania, King Island, Smithton and Friendly Beaches reaching a high of 22, 23 across at Helens and Grove and 19 at Lowhead. On the close-up shows cloud covering Tasmania. Further out, a middle-level cloud band is extending from eastern WA across southern South Australia to cover Tasmania. Tomorrow, a high remains over eastern Australia, while troughs lie over the remainder of the continent. Westerly winds tomorrow 10 to 20 knots, swells up to 3 metres in the west and south and below 1 metre in the north. A strong wind warning is current for eastern, southern and western coastal waters from Wineglass Bay to Stanley. Tomorrow's forecast now, rain developing across Hobart and Signet, New Norfolk 22. In the north, 21 and rain developing about Launceston and Campbelltown, Devonport 19. Burnie tomorrow 19 and rain developing, Strawn 21, Smithton rain increasing. Rain developing about St Helens and Swansea, Fingal, a high of 22. The UV forecast mostly high sevens across the state. 
Looking ahead to the three-day forecast, Friday rain about the east, west and far south. Saturday showers about the west and far south, fine elsewhere. And Sunday mostly fine about the north, showers elsewhere. Capital cities, Melbourne expecting possible showers tomorrow. Sydney, 29 and sunny and 26 in Perth, partly cloudy. And currently Hobart 21 and partly cloudy, Launceston 19 with a possible shower and Devonport 18 and cloudy. That's all for weather tonight, Murph. Thanks very much, Jackie. Before I go, I've got to say a big hello to my travel agent, Gary, and also to all the travel agents out there. Normally very hard-working people, but they've been pushed to a new level over the last couple of weeks, trying to find ways of getting people back from overseas. And all of us who have bookings uh, for impending travel, trying to amend those or even cancel them. They're uh, really working very hard. We feel for you. That's all our news for you for now. I'll be back later with updates. Thanks for joining us. Good night.